look up, how did you get from Luther Vandross to the Mormon Tabernacle Choir? On Music Channel, on Music okay. Choice. <laughs> so you whisper in there, whatever you want to whisper, mm. it'll, if they can, if they have it, can find it, mm. it'll bring it on the screen and tell you how to look for it. Well, I guess that's a far cry. When you first started listening to music, you couldn't be whispering into anything. You had to get up, put the record on, take it off, put the needle down, whatever. Clean oh, the yeah, record. that's what you know you had to do that. Mm -hmm. And my grandma had one that you had to turn, put the record on there, and then you had to uh, go to the thing and crank it. I call it cranking, to turn it around. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and long as you were turning around, you could hear some music or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I said, this is the, my grandma has the best thing in the world. We didn't have that at home. Mm -hmm. But as far as I was concerned, that was major advancement. Mm -hmm. as as the those. cranking. <laughs> see, see, we didn't have that. We had a radio. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. Everybody had a radio. And on Sunday mornings, with every, everybody in my house, whether they wanted to listen to it or not, my daddy said, it's about time for the, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir to come on. Mm. And they're going to be singing. Da, 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 da. He would hum what we're going to be listening to. Wait a second. But more about, but didn't you grow up in a Baptist? What, what kind of church did you grow up in? I'm quite sure your choir was a little bit more dynamic than, than the singing of the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. And you were in the choir, too. Yeah, y'all didn't sing like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir. Then you all, hey, I'll go. <laughs> no, know. we didn't do that. Oh, one. did you have tambourines then? What you have? What kind of church you go to? I went to the Baptist church, and I went to an, an Episcopal church. So Episcopal, and I yeah. went to a Catholic church. Okay, Catholic. Yeah, we know the Catholic. We we'll go back to the Baptist church. They didn't have a tambourine in the Baptist. No, church? Reverend E. L. Harris did not have that for us. We were the little, little tots. But didn't you hear the choir? What, what was the choir Well, saying? my choir would sing all they wanted to, but Reverend E.L. Harris would have already had a session, he called it, with my next generation children. And he called all the children up there to him. He'd come out <laughs> of the pulpit and get in front of, in front of the altar and have all the children together around him like he would tell them a story, what he was doing was giving us the essence of what the other folk in the church would be hearing in his sermon. Mm -hmm. But he would give it to us in a childlike understanding. He was practicing on you. I don't know, but we thought he was the only person in the world because we didn't. We didn't know until last year where Reverend E. L. Harris has a name. There's some letters for the letters standing for something. I said, oh. Reverend E. L. Edward, Edward is, his, is the first name, mm -hmm. and e -L, L. was Leroy, Edward Leroy. Mm. You know, Leroy, Leroy is, 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 comes from the French, it means king. Oh, it does. It's trans, well, that's the, that's the Anglo root of Leroy is king. I didn't even know that Reverend E. L. Harris had, a, had children. I didn't even know he was married. Until I was in the third grade, getting ready to go in the fourth, and a little girl in my room, they called her Little Mary. Mm -hmm. And Little Mary would always bring you information, give information to the teachers. Mm -hmm. And the, during that time, the teachers would have a, a strap in the drawer. Oh, no. <laughs> and Little Mary would come back and she said, I, don't, I hate to tell you this, but do you know, brother? was out there playing in the hall. We went out to get a sip of water. And you said, how could that be? I didn't even go out of the room. And she would say, honestly, I would not tell a lie. I am a pastor's daughter. Oh, no, preacher's daughter. That's what she would say. They're the worst. And then she would go in the desk drawer and pick out this strap. And you, would, well, you wouldn't hold your hand up. Okay, and wait little, a second. Hold on. Back and up. little Mary said, hold your hand up. It's not going to hurt long. Okay, let me get this straight. Mary, who was a preacher's door, obviously, uh, how you say, uh, named after uh, the, the, the Immaculate Conception Mary, right? So she had, you know, the purest, whatever. 
And but anyway, she she was she was how do you say this? She was fibbing on y'all. She was she was ratting y'all out. What was going on? She was no, just plain she, long line. She's lying. That's all she was doing, and <laughs> she would ju- and she would justify it by saying, "I would not lie. I'm a pa- I'm a preacher's daughter, mm. and look at you so so lovingly." And then anybody gonna say, "The child must be telling the truth." Look at what she's saying, and look at her expression on her face. I said, "Oh my gosh." Little Mary, don't ever tell a story on me, please. Because I'm not going to let you get away with it. Well, somebody must have stopped her from doing that. When, 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 when did that stop? Did she, did she get day come up and... we walked down the hall in a line mm-hmm. to get a sip of water. Mm-hmm. And you were asked not to put your feet on the woodwork. The, the, the woodwork in, the, in that hall was all hardwood. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mm. Brand new school, of course. Mm. We were told what not. School, what school was this? Brand new school. Robert, I mean R. A. Tucker, Richard Allen Tucker. In Norfolk. That's the name of the school in, in Norfolk. Mm, mm, mm. And uh, so she said, "And I'll know if you st- if you put your feet on that woodwork. Do you understand?" Everybody said, "Yes, ma'am." We got in this line, went down the hall. Got in the same straight line. We just turned the line around. Mm-hmm. So when you get your sip of water, you just go in and go back to the classroom. Of course, yeah. That's a not bad thing, thing to follow. Yeah. Traffic. We did that. Yeah. But we noticed that little Mary wasn't in, in the line. Mm. I said, well, she must just doesn't want any water. Mm. We were thinking that each person in that line mm-hmm. waiting to get some sip of water said, well, maybe little Mary is not thirsty. Mm. Or maybe uh, she can't drink any water until she has a lunch. Uh, it had a whole lot of reasons why little Mary was not in line. Mm. Got back in the classroom and sat down. And Miss Ross, the teacher, said, Did all of you get your sips of water? Everybody said, yes, ma'am. No, yes, Miss Ross. And... uh. We wondered why she did why why didn't call her Mrs. Ross? Somebody said you got mm. to be married to be a Mrs. She's not married. Mm. So one guy said that explains why she still got to beat on us because she, <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a husband. <laughs> and somebody said that's not nice to say. How old were you? All? How old was this? How old were you? Seven, six, seven, no, seven, six, seven. What grade was you in? Eight, no, seventh grade. I mean, uh, seven years old. Seven years old. Third okay. grade. Wow. Uh-huh. Oh, God. So she said, she, so then she said to, uh, who did not get in water? All the guys said, uh, Mary didn't get in the water. Mary, why? Why, Mary, didn't you get a sip of water? She said, because I was trying to keep my eye out for those people who put their feet on the woodwork. <laughs> Nobody asked her to do that. Gosh. And so little Mary, Miss, Miss Ross said, did you observe anyone uh, who, did, who violated that rule? Everybody did everything except one person. They said, Mary, you aren't telling, you, are you telling on yourself? Mm. And little Mary said, no, ma'am. Only one person did not do didn't do what you said do no did yeah, did not do, and did not keep her feet on the floor, put her foot on the she put her foot on the woodwork, mm. and the kids who were still in line behind me to get my sip of water said, "Little Mary, that's not true. Mm. How do you know?" She says. I was standing there watching everyone, you know. And Miss Ross said, well, I guess I got me a stoolie. I'm going to listen to her and see what she has to say. She says, Mary, what did you observe? I observed everybody keeping their feet on the floor except one person. She kept saying except one person. Mm. And so Miss Ross finally had to say, well, Mary... Who is this one person 
I know you say you didn't get water because you were keeping an eye out for those who may put their feet on the uh, woodwork. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am, that's what I was doing. No, that's the reason I didn't get any water. Mm -hmm. So somebody said, won't you go get some water now? You don't have anybody to tell them to mm -hmm. make up a lie. Oh, I wouldn't lie. That's what she said. <laughs> I wouldn't lie. <laughs> <laughs> I, first of all, we weren't even allowed to say the word lie. We had to say a story. You couldn't say that because mm -hmm. my you had to see my big mom. My big mama said, "No way, you gonna talk like that this on is, the streets." This is interesting because in Africa, uh, people I work with, they don't say lie. They say, "Oh, he he tells stories." Uh -huh. they, they say that. They say he tells stories. Kind of uh -huh. interesting. Okay. You remember the st this song "Straighten Up and Fly," right? Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. My sister and uncle and everybody had grown. Would be sad singing, breaking up and flooding, right? Cool down, but well, don't you blow your mm -hmm. top? Now, Big Mama had been listening to that. When he got to the part, the buzzer told the monkey, mm -hmm. You are choking mm -hmm. me, release your hoat, and I'll set you mm -hmm. free. The buzzer looked the monkey right dead mm -hmm. in the eye, and he said, Your story is so touching, sounds just like a a big mom would, would do this. Uh -huh. And they said, Sound just like a story. <laughs> no, but it's fly, right? And I said, and I said, that's not the way I heard it. But did I try to correct them? Oh, Ooh, no. I wasn't going to be Little Mary. Uh -uh. Little Mary said that to Miss Ross, that I'm a preacher's daughter and I would not lie. And she said, Dorothea, what do you have to say about that? I said, Mr. R Mrs. Ross, I don't want to say anything, but I want to tell the truth. Little Mary is not telling the mm -hmm. truth. She's telling a story. See that? She don't even know how to say the word lie. So one guy... Mary, Mary said that? Uh, Who said, see that she doesn't know how to say the word lie? Who said that? One of the guys in the class oh, oh, said, okay. uh -huh. that's not what she said. She did not say that, and she didn't do what you are saying she did. She said, Miss Ross said, what do you have to say about that? I said, well, since she said she was trained by her, her, her daddy, I don't know her daddy's name, but you could, uh, I said, you could find out Miss Ross to see if she's allowed to say L-I-E, I said. <laughs> and one guy said, from a different house than mine, because my house, you don't say that, you have to say story. Mm. So then Miss Ross went back to Mary, and little Mary said, no one seems to understand me. So hold on, hold on, let's back, back up. So that means that little Mary was saying that you were the person that put your foot on the wood? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And that's why the guys <clears throat> jumped up at her, because they knew I did not. Mm -hmm. And the way, reason she was standing over there not getting her water was because she could go in there and be a stoolie, you know, mm -hmm. some, I guess, call it get it brownie points. Mm -hmm. But when little Mary kept on saying it, that I did, I said, little Mary, that's not nice. I said, when we go out for lunch today, we had lunch period, and then you have, you're given 15 minutes freedom just to go outside and vent yourself and play, mm -hmm. do what you want to do. Or beat up little Mary. That was the idea with this one guy said, hey, this is time for you to make her tell the truth. Mm. I said, I'm going to make her tell the truth when she's already said what she said and it was because she's a preacher's daughter. He said, you know, she's probably to start using that. She's going to use it until somebody stops her. Mm. And uh, one girl said, are you afraid of Mary? I said, no. Have you ever been in a fight? I said, once. They said, what was that for? I said, because somebody was uh, hurting a little child and the little child didn't, didn't do anything wrong. And you were in a fight for that? I said, I was trying to really protect that little child mm -hmm. from that big girl who was trying to hurt her. Mm -hmm. So the girl said to me, well, this is an opportunity for you to hurt little Mary, hurt Mary, because she's trying. 
she's going to get you hurt with that strap that she has in that desk drawer. She had already taken the strap out and slapped it on the desk. Oh, wait a second. See. Who took the slap out? The, the teacher? The teacher. Okay, okay. She okay. got that, bar- I call it the barber's strap. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know, yeah. yeah. We, we all had, we had a strap in our house, too. Because a lot, a lot of places, people would use anything they had, a, a, a ironing cord, whatever. Anything so, but, to get the hands yeah. on. But, but in our house, we had a strap. You said, go get the strap. And you go like, oh, man, it's the slowest Let me tell you, <laughs> when little Mary saw that strap come on that desk, and she took that thing and, and Rather than just placing it on there, she took it, takes it out of her desk drawer and, and slaps it on there. Slaps it on. Let you know this is how it's going to sound when you get it on you. <laughs> and I said, uh-uh, I don't want, I have never been, had a whipping in my life mm. until that time. I said, my first whipping is going to be behind someone telling a story on me. Wait, 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 before you went out, hold on, now back up. Before you went out, so, so, so you got a whipping for Mary's lie? No. Oh, not you. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I said, did this be the first time I've ever gotten a whipping or a spanking or whatever they called it? Mm. I never got one because I had a choice. Do what you were told to do, and that was it. There was no way I can get out of doing what I was asked to do. My daddy had the philosophy is, if he would say to you, brother... I, I want you to uh, bring those slithers of wood in, lightning wood, like to start the fire. That was your job. Mm-hmm. And he didn't want to tell you this over and over and over again, but you had a way of waiting to the last minute mm-hmm. to go get the stuff to start the fire. But it isn't always that that, Wood is going to be absolutely dry and ready for use. But you said, oh, I can do that tomorrow. <laughs> and my brother would say, brother, why don't you do it now? If you do it now, maybe we can help you bring it in. You're not my daddy. And my sister would say, and you're not my mother. Mother said, and who is this? substitute parents you have in that kitchen and the sister would say I don't know I was just trying to help and my brother who became a Jehovah Witness minister blessed his little heart I heard it I heard the same thing she heard mother good lord in heaven that's what I heard and mother said didn't I tell you about taking the lord's name in vain Good Lord in heaven, that's what I said, mother. She said, well, you said it again. That's the third time. And she said, and when I get enough energy, I'm going to remind you about these three times. At that moment, I decided that my mother belonged to the elephant tribe. Somewhere I had heard the elephants remember everything. Everything. And they remember in order. So I said, I wish they hadn't said that. So then my brother one next to me said, when are they going to learn that mother may be sickly, but she can still hear Mm -hmm. and she has a voice. She's still our mother and we're going to honor and respect that. And we're not going to try to take over because the minute you try to take over, you mess up. Mm -hmm. Little sister said, won't mess up with me because I know when I say something, she gonna believe me. Mm-hmm. And my brother will say, and I believe you, baby. So was a, she said, because you know I am the baby. That was her ex excuse mm-hmm. for for not doing what you're supposed to do until the next morning when it's time for start the fire. Nobody can find the dry mm-hmm. wood. To put in that furnace with the coal. We got this CB white coal, uh, and 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 then when they um we brought the coal in to put it in that I uh, coal bin, they had some sl- small pieces of coal that we could use very well in starting a fire. Mm. Start the fire, 
and it's burning nice, and then you can add those large pieces of coal on top of it because it'll continue burning. Mm. Well, the next morning, they get up and try to get the stars going. Want to know, Joyce, where did you put the, the little fire starter pieces of wood? She said, what wood? <laughs> the one that they were told, Mother said, the one that they t asked, told, you know, reminded you to bring it in last night. Oh, you mean that? She said, yes, I mean that. And I'm the mother speaking, since she reminded everybody that you, that she was, they were not the mother or the father. Mother said, okay. Four times. I never knew what the four times meant. That's the four thing whipping that she's going to get when she get it for four times that she had to put it off. Little sister thought she had made it well, you know, she's, I got away. <laughs> but go go back to back to talking about getting away. Go back to Mary and 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 the, and the school and the and the, and the and the, the break that you had. You you know you was going out to play or you going out. Oh, she was sending a note to the principal. Let the principal talk to her, and to let her know that what she had done was unusual, and she wanted the principal of the school to know that was something that. Maybe she would like to hear Mary. I guess Mary could tell the story again. But the principal was not in the office. So when we, when she went there and looked for the principal, the secretary said that she was in the cafeteria. I said, okay, well, it wasn't unusual for the principal to have lunch with the children. You know, they just, she just walk in there and look, I think I want to eat with them today. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, go back. I want to get back to. I want to find out if we had a fight or not. If you fought this girl at this at this uh, Mary at this break that you had, that's what I want to know. Who had a who Did, fought her? Yeah, but in the way she was lying on you, uh, you know, telling stories. But on But the you. words was getting around. Okay. That that I was going to make her tell the truth. Okay. That, that's they didn't getting... say how. Just said I was going to make her tell the truth. That's the only thing the kids wanted. Somebody to hear. There's another side to the story. Yeah. This a lady who's just said everything is based on because her daddy was a preacher. Okay, it's Mrs. The teacher should have said, "What well, does Reverend E. L. Ha Reverend Harris know about this?" She didn't do that. She was so glad she had somebody to, to blame everything on. That that little Mary could do it, you know. So, but the note said to the principal only, oh, would you please, if you have time, would you talk with uh, little Mary and somebody else just said, because, and, and, and Dorothea, because I think they have a, a conflicting stories, no, have stories, but each conflicting the other. Mm. And would you, in your way, See if you can get to the root of it. That's what the teacher was asking the principal to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she was. She had already done it, but <clears throat> she wanted the somebody who was not, I guess, in the room or to hear what the conversation was about. Mm. Well, when the note got to the principal, the principal was now sitting at the table with some class, and the secretary gave her the note. All sealed up and everything. So she opens it and she reads it. And she reads it and she got to the bottom of it and it says, Thank you for whatever, whatever you, wh thank you for what you may do, may say or do. And had her name, uh, it was. Miss Ross' first name was, she put her full name there. So the principal read it again. And she said to the secretary, so where is uh, this little child they call little Mary? He said, yeah, she, right over there by the door. She, Mary wouldn't come in the cafeteria. She mm -hmm. just looked at the door, get near the principal. I guess she said, the principal, 
teacher's not going to do anything to me with the principal right here. The principal is going to take over. She didn't take over. The principal read the note, got up from the table, and took me by the hand and little Mary by the hand. So here we are. Mary and Doe went up to the cashier and asked the cashier if you have enough ice cream treats and punch for a class. Hmm. And so the dietitian said, yes, ma'am. She said, whose birthday is it? She said, I just feel like uh, I want to put a special treat on for the class that I'm eating, that class, who invited me to have lunch with them. So her treat was to, for us to have a ice cream, ice cream cup, a whole ice cream cup. Not a popsicle, but a pot, ice cream cup hmm. and some punch. And it wasn't any Kool-Aid punch. It was real serious punch. Can you put ginger ale in it? <laughs> oh gosh. And then she wants she wants Mary and wants the two of us to join her mm. and this class mm. with this ice cream and punch. Mary had the worst time trying to drink that punch. I guess she said every time she put that cup to her face, mm. she thought about the tales that she was telling. It was almost like a confession. Huh. <coughs> the principal said to me, Dorethea. How do you feel now after you're sitting there beside her enjoying your uh, your ice cream, your treat? <clears throat> I said, I think it's very nice. And I, I know what my daddy's going to ask me to do or remind me. Did I say thank you? She said, yes, you said it several times. So I said, well, that's my, my daddy would be sure, be very happy to know that I was not being this, I was not being uh, impolite or not courteous or thankful. She said, your daddy going to ask you all that? I said, I don't know which one my daddy may use, but he means it all means the same as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Little Mary didn't touch her punch. She did not even eat any of the ice cream. So the principal wanted to know, what's wrong? Is that the wrong flavor? Did you prefer another one? Would you have wanted chocolate or vanilla or strawberry? <clears throat> well, you could. She said, oh, I don't care for any of that because I have not had my lunch yet. There's a plate right in front of her of food. Mm -mm -mm. And so the principal said, well, Mary, you want to um, ask the dietitian to uh, leave a plate for you. And when you feel hungry, you can come in here and, and have your lunch. No, I'm, I don't think I want to do that. Only thing I want to do is just go outside and rip and run and play rip and run. Who in the world can rip and run out there? You don't have a 15 minutes. But see, she had not planned to have lunch, I think. She can go outside and play all by herself. <laughs> she wouldn't have to be worried with anybody. Mm. So Mary mm -hmm. was scared to death. And the only thing I did was I went outside where they were all playing, and the kids saw me come out there, and they ran from what they were doing over there where I was. And one little boy I said, for me, just hit her one time. Mm -hmm. One. Don't you had to doesn't be hard. Just look like you go hit her. For me, <laughs> I said. I said, but no, I'll get in trouble if I fight or do something like that. And the principal had asked us to go out and be friends and class and classmate friends. That's what she said. It. I know it, but she's not out here now. This is a chance for you to give her one big one and get it for me. Uh -huh. If I had listened to those guys, I still still be trying to get out of third grade because <laughs> they would they had it in for her. They, they had been she'd been telling tales on them for first grade, second grade, and now in third grade. Uh -huh. 
but no one ever knew who her daddy was, except a few of us who lived in Norfolk, went to Tucker School, and moved away, and they come back home sometimes to say, I wonder how is Reverend uh, E.L. Harris doing? I said, you know Reverend E.L. Harris? They said, yeah. I said, well, what are those E.L. stand for? And they told me. I said, he, all these years, all these years, I didn't know the man had in his name but Reverend E.L. Harris. I said, he's the only person with E three alphabet for his first name, and one for E, middle name was L, and last name was Harris. We even called his church E.L. Harris's First Baptist Church in Campostella, Norfolk, Virginia. But, that was his whole name. So you know, so you never hit the girl. Never touched her. So what happened? Who the, the so did you get the strap? Well, I don't understand how how does this resolve? I I don't know to the point that I know little Mary stopped telling making up tales on people. When he would go out for something, and it, little Mary said, I'll keep an eye out. Somebody said, not for me. If he, if he, then he'll say, the boys were a little braver than the girls, I guess. I guess they figured uh, if they would hit her or do something, they can say, little Mary started it. Mm -hmm. Or little Mary did her usual thing, you know. But uh, when... We went, that was third grade. When I went to fourth grade, I went to Miss Macklin. And that was the first time I ever had a teacher who was a, was single and was going to get married, you know, becoming engaged. Mm -hmm. But in order for her to get married, she said, the teacher told us, I'll have to talk to my fiance and to see if he would have time to come and meet all my children. Hmm. He said, because you become our children uh, if we, when we marry. One girl said, well, can we, do we have to give him, give you permission to get married? <laughs> and she said, permission? She said, you know, somebody said, yes, it's okay for you to get married hmm. or it's not, it's not okay. She said, no, but I, I'll explain that to him. Do you not know he came mm. to visit her and to visit us? And she introduced him as saying, you said that if he came, you would get, he would give us, give us permission to get married. No, become engaged. That's what she said. He was sitting over there looking like a little chess cat. Dress shop. I mean, we said, boy, she's going to marry a rich man. Mm. He was all coordinated with his suit on and his the neck, the ties, mm. and the, his slacks were all pressed. Did he have a pocket handkerchief? No, that was before Hunt. That was that. But well, he had a, 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 a boutonniere, mm. a, a flower, you know, mm. his lapel. Mm. So when she said, boys and girls, and uh, and somebody else, I think the principal came in there too because she wanted to see him mm -hmm. also, I think. I You asked that if I would see if my intended would be willing to come to visit you and get permission. And uh, she said, and here he is. His name is, I forgot what his name is now, but she said, and pointed to him, mm -hmm. he got up and thanked uh, the principal for coming. And uh, his, of course, he said, and my intended uh, wife to be, and you wonderful children, I'm here because I love her so much. And she loves me also so much. With that in mind, Whatever she's been accustomed to having and doing, I want you to know that I'm going to make it my business 
to see that she continues getting back. Even though she may not be here in the classroom with you, but you can let it go and let, I'll have her to take it in her heart. So here the one little guy stood up. He be, I don't know why I appointed him to, to be the sp spokesman for us. He said, with that in mind, with the power in the principalship, I guess the principal said, I didn't say a word. <laughs> and the, <laughs> and the boy, and my classmates, and for me, if he had said classmate, that was enough for everybody. That, mm -hmm. But and for me, we hereby give you permission to get engaged and to get married to this man, but for no other person. If you change, if you change your mind, <laughs> they gonna have to come and do the same thing you do. <laughs> and the guy said. Uh, okay, I hear what you're saying. Does that mean you're giving me permission? The little girl who was acting as a mistress of ceremonies said, with all the power that he has and passed on to me, I say to you, you have permission to become engaged to, to our teacher, Miss Macklin who will not be missed for long or something. Mm -hmm. If you if you agree with me, please show us, give us a symbol, you know, a show of our thinking the same way all of us stood up, just like it was a play or something, because we approved of him, because mm -hmm. he seemed like he was the right kind of person for, for our teacher, because everybody just couldn't be really marrying Miss Macklin. I said, okay. So now we're going to have us a teacher who's going to get married. Now, I was wondering, the children go to the teacher's wedding or engagement parties? Unless your parents are going, they take you by the hand and you go mm -hmm. with them. I said, but my mother and daddy probably not going to be invited to go to her engagement party. I didn't even know anybody who had enough money to have an engagement party, had enough tr trouble trying to get a, well, a gown to wear for the wedding, you know, or pay for the reception or something. Well, this is all well and good, but I, let me ask you this. Was little Mary in that class? Uh-huh. She was in the Mrs. Macklin's, well, Miss Macklin's class. So she was, she now, now she stopped lying or she stopped stooling or whatever? I think she got scared. So she just so when she, so when she got to fourth grade, she just stopped for her for her storytelling. Mm -hmm. Cause she had some some of those girls in that class were not as humble as they were in the third grade. The, the fourth grade guys were rough. The third grade boys were rough. The girls were uh, in between. You know, they were trying to get. They said they would get their mm, brownie points. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about a brownie point, but I heard, heard them say, so I said, it must be something that you get when you live in another part of town. I said, I didn't know that. But little Mary was with me up to the fourth grade, and when we got to the fifth grade, went to Mother Dear, Velma Coppage Bunch, the sweetest lady that I ever had as a teacher, mm. one of them. We walked in her classroom. I saw all these plants on the, her husband had built um, like a, uh, one, two, three, four, three, four steps. Mm -hmm. like, and on each step, there was a different type of plant in there. Mm -hmm. Some bloomed and some was just plain green. She had a, an aquarium in there that had to be, it was set up, the water was there ready. All you had to do was get the fish to put in there. But she wanted that to become a class project so the children could suggest the kind of fish they thought that should go into in there. Okay, can you go back? I just want to know, whatever happened to Mary? Little Mary, you see, when I, we go, fifth grade, that was, 
fifth grade with little mama. Little Mary didn't have much, much, much contact with the teachers uh, as she did when, in the third grade with Miss Ross. No, she was she she wasn't a stoolie for the rest of the teachers. No, she just decided that she. she I guess she said, "I want to, I want to be special," and I know the best way to be special is to see the teachers take out the strap and use it. Okay, so now what happened to, uh, did you ever, um, was Mary, little Mary in your high school or did she go to college with you all? Did you ever? I don't know. Um, Whatever happened to they her? They had a, the church had a fire and all the children were worried to death about Reverend E.L. Harris. But they didn't know that little, that Reverend E.L. Harris was Mary's daddy. We didn't even know she, we didn't know he had a, she had a daddy. <laughs> no, she never talked about her daddy, except when she was telling a tale on somebody and she was I would not lie. I'm a preacher's daughter, you know. So, so whatever, when, did you know whatever happened to her in life? Let's put it that way. Uh, Shirley told me, who, who told me the Reverend E.L. Harris, that was, um, Miguel L. Harris's daughter said Mary didn't live there very long after graduating from high school. She went to live with an, a relative, and I don't know if the relative was her mother or, or somebody in her family. But she said I didn't. She said I didn't keep in contact with little Mary. She said she's the kind of person you can say well I met her, and that's almost enough. Because you stay there too long, she's gonna have something on you. Mm. That yeah. she's gonna have to use her daddy yeah. as her source. <laughs> but see, Mother Dear wouldn't allow that. She didn't. She didn't allow stoolies. <laughs> she, she would. She took every child in that classroom as her very own, mm. and would not allow anyone to do anything that would hurt us. Hurt us. Even to the point if they had an assembly program and somebody in the class was going to do something, if it's no more to get up and say, good morning, Miss Williams, teachers, boys and girls, or, and mothers and fathers. Let us all stand quietly and face the American flag and say the Pledge of the Allegiance. And the the lady who was in charge of music would start playing, da, 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 you know, playing it softly, yeah. and everybody was singing. I pledge the allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. You just couldn't just round through it. You had to be very dramatic with that. Did you know? I, I was just uh, this past weekend. I was at the St. Mary's because you know that's 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 my sister's church. You know. And so, because uh, they had a special ceremony because St. Mary is now officially a basilica. And, but I remember years ago, this, this is like, I guess the late 90s, when I, was, when I went there visiting because my, because, you know, my niece, you know, my, my sister's daughter, she went to St. Mary's as a school. Uh -huh. And so when she was in second grade, um, they asked me to come and, you know, talk about what I, what I do. Uh -huh. what I so first it was just going to be the second grade. I went in there and they had the second graders, the third graders. The, the, I, they had about three classes in there. But what was interesting to me about that whole thing, about St. Mary's at least, because, you know, it's a basilica, but it's the only black basilica in the United States, in North America. St. Mary's is officially now. And it's the only African-American, as they say, um, uh, basilica, well, you know, it's just um, the only one. Okay. So it's very unique. And a basilica is a thing where pil pilgrim, pilgrims go to pray. But anyway, when I went when I went to do uh, my uh, my niece's class, what was interesting to me? And this is way back when. This is when Father Barrett, who's now Monsignor Barrett, he was Father Barrett. Yes, he's Monsignor now. I just saw him. I got it. well. Um, he uh, you know he was head of the school. But what they do, they would how would they do? It? I think they would face front, and they would say a prayer first because it's a Catholic school, right? Mm -hmm. Then they would turn and face the American flag. And do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Then they would turn one more time 
and face the it was they had a black liberation for you know red black and green fair uh -huh. and they would do lift every voice and sing you know the James Weldon Johnson thing the, the, the you know the the the, the, the black national anthem <laughs> I was very impressed I said wow they did the Catholic thing the American thing and the African American thing amazing you know so Father I was, Barrett I, was one and a kind yeah. was well, so he's a uh, He's a Monsignor now. Yeah. He's up in Richmond. It's Cynthia. It's Cynthia. It's at uh, Alexis's graduation. Mm -hmm. I was sitting up there on this right here, and somebody was here, and then, and in the right in the middle was Alexis, some other child, and ever who the, the, those kids graduating, mm -hmm. and on the other side they had uh, Miss. Uh, since uh, Alexis's godmother, uh, a Mercedes, and two other people were sitting on the other side. And when it was time for them to introduce the persons who were graduating, father went up there with them, and they said, "And for uh, Alexis." Therefore, they will be first, not because of her alphabet and her name. It's because she's one of my children. Mm. Every child that was introduced, Father Barrett has something to say that, hey, this is my one of my sons mm -hmm. or one of my daughters or something like that. Mm. But the whole time he was talking about my daughter and my thing. The godmother would look over there at at uh, Alexa. I guess to see what expression would be on Alexa's face. The only expression on Alexa's face was, "I'm so glad I'm graduating." And <laughs> Father Barrett just said something nice about me. I got my godmother here, and my grand, and my mother, and my father. And I, and she said, "Oh, I'm a special person." Thought she was special. She's sitting there real proud. Mm -hmm. He said, and Alexis, come down. Come, 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 Alexis. Alexis got up there with her little new outfit on. And I was a very proud mother sitting over there, grandmother sitting over there looking. But every time father would say something about those children who were graduating, you could hear a sounds in the in the in the audience. He invited the fifth graders to be special guests for her graduation so they can get an idea what it looks like. Mm. He said, because when you're graduating, there's so much going on with you, you don't get a chance to look at the scene. Because mm. you were so excited and thankful, you mm. know. Then father decided he's going to do his uh, a chant. I, I don't know where he taught the children to chant or what, but he did some chant. And the fifth graders all just stood up and applauded because they said, this is what graduation is like. Not that when they graduated, did they have the same thing, but they had it that day for Alexis. Mm -hmm. When it was over, um, one of the persons at the church stood up and said, for all gathered here, you are welcome and would advise, like to come to the graduations luncheon. I kind of cut my eye around that church. I said, my gracious, wonder where they're going to have it. All these folk can go in there for a luncheon. They meant they were going into the lunchroom and two rooms that they used in the, for, for classrooms. Yeah. They turned that into a dining room. Well, I was there. That's a, they, they stopped it because before. See, what I liked about when I first was visiting down here, St. Mary was, I call it the, uh, the ca a Catholic church that, that acted Baptist because, first of all, the service was longer than an hour. Usually, Catholic church is like 45 minutes an hour. Yes. Right? It was longer than that. They had two choirs. Plus, at the end of the, at the, end of the service, you always went downstairs and they had, they had a meal. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that. That's right. Well, anyway, we got, I got to end it here because I do, but... This is great. Uh, to talking about uh, uh, teachers and principals. You have you in this era. We have some really good teachers, 
and principles. Yes. Mm. Yes. 